good morning and welcome to this morning session. Um, let me first remind you about the question policy for remote people or online people. If you want to pose a question to the speaker, just turn on your uh, microphone and ask the question directly. Or you can also post the question in the chat box. For local people here, uh, please first ask for the microphone so that you, your question can be, so that the remote people can hear you, can hear the question. And also this is for the recordings of the talk. Okay. Uh, now my great, uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Christian Branchet from Université Paris Cité. Uh, and the title of the talk is From Jones' Relation to Representations of the Mapping Class Groups. Please. Okay, thank you very much. So I first want to thank the organizers. It's a great honor for me to give a talk for this, uh, conf in this conference in memory of uh, Vaughan Jones. And uh, I first uh, want uh, to remember again Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we can go back to that. Okay, perfect. Okay, that uh, Vaughn was a uh, sport and was indeed uh, very friendly. So this was in uh, Athens in 2016 for the North in Elias conference. Okay, now uh, with Mats. So I like uh, in first uh, part of my talk. Uh, to say something about uh, uh, the foundation uh, of quantum uh, topology. I would say uh, he was not the only uh, uh, person to contribute to this foundation, but probably he was the initiator of the procedure, and that was with this uh, famous uh, uh, polynomial invariant. It was found in 84, and you see uh, the famous publication. And, uh, uh, my uh, Jones relation uh, is the one, this now called Skane relation, which appear in this uh, theorem uh, 12 uh, in his paper. So this is about knots and links, and uh, we represent uh, uh, three uh, links uh, which are the same outside a small disk for the picture, and with a change of crossing or zero crossing, and this relation is just this one. And indeed, uh, this is very powerful because with the normalization, one for the unknot, this uh, determines uh, the Jones polynomial. So this came uh, as written here as a trace invariant in relation uh, with what we heard yesterday. One, uh, okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to put the sound down a bit because you. I'm too, too loud. <laughs> I'm speaking loud. Sorry. I know. I know this. <laughs> Should be better now. Okay. Sorry for moving here. Okay. So uh, then uh, we had this uh, very simple uh, Kaufman state construction, uh, which was very well spread. So this was a little bit after. And here is uh, the Kaufman bracket model with the recursive definition. Now the diagram is no more oriented. And uh, the first relation just smooths the crossing in two ways. Uh, try to understand which one is positive resolution and which one is negative resolution using the plane orientation. And uh, you have also a normalization, which is this minus A2 minus A minus 2 uh, for a trivial component. And I like to see also a global formula, which is indeed a state formula. Uh, you take a sum of uh, all state of crossings, so you will have two power number of crossing states, and uh, you have contribution which are counted uh, with uh, the, the number of uh, the total uh, state, the sum of a crossing, and also uh, this uh, cardinality of uh, ds uh, is the is the number of component of uh, the diagram after resolution, which is embedded curve. And so you have this very simple formula, and this could be connected uh, just an aside with more recent uh, quantum topology because uh, this is indeed a polynomial in A, and this tried to be 
uh, graded uh, Euler characteristic. And uh, this was done by Misha Ovanov, who will give, uh, give a talk. So I think here that uh, this could be uh, some uh, Euler characteristic, if you see that, uh, think that this is simple. So then here, uh, uh, state one is the positive resolution, and state minus is the negative resolution. And then Jones polynomial is recovered with this formula. So you get, uh, you, you have to uh, normalize with what uh, is called the Rife, and just think that you, you sum all signs of crossing, a positive crossing will come with a plus one, a negative crossing with a minus one, and you sum over everything, and you evaluate at A equal T minus one over four, and this gives a simple definition which recovers uh, 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 Jones polynomial. So uh, it's nice to see that uh, uh, indeed you can compute. And uh, for the trefoil, uh, you see that you will have uh, eight states, but you have a symmetry, so you can count uh, three at a time, and uh, you get this. And when you evaluate with the previous formula, you get uh, this uh, formula minus t4 t plus t3 plus t, which you know. And indeed, uh, if you change uh, by the mirror image, uh, you will change the value. And this uh, was a good thing to see that it's not uh, Alexander polynomial because you distinguish between uh, trefoil, left and right trefoil. So that was the beginning of the story. And then uh, I will switch uh, to, uh, uh, the, of course, after this, uh, many people came uh, with uh, link invariants. We will come back to this. But uh, towards uh, quantum topology, uh, the key point was uh, with interpretation of uh, Edward Witten. And I want to quote uh, two papers because uh, you, you have, of course, uh, this quantum field theory and the Jones polynomial. This, you see the interpretation. I will come with the text in one minute. But also, this uh, topological quantum field theory. So it's not still quantum topology, but almost. <laughs> and uh, you will recover this title in one minute. So in quantum field theory and the Jones polynomial, you see that uh, here it is shown that a two plus one dimensional quantum young mill theory with an ancient consisting purely of chern simon term is exactly soluble and gives a natural framework for understanding the Jones polynomial of knots theory in three-dimensional terms. And in this version, the Jones polynomial can be generalized from S3 to arbitrary three manifolds. And this was just a challenge given by the physicist we, we needed to construct uh, mathematically. And uh, this result shed a surprising new light on conformal field theory and one plus one dimension. So I think Jones plus V10 was really the starting point of quantum topology. Then uh, you have, uh, indeed, when we work on this, uh, we were also following uh, Atiyah's uh, contribution to this, even if we, this is not uh, so much uh, known. Uh, the, the funny point is that uh, you have, at the same time, a second paper with the same title as before, uh, Topological Quantum Field Theory, and also the jones witten invariant of knots, uh, exposed in the uh, seminar Bourbaki. And the Jones polynomial can be studied from many angles, and has been generalized in several ways, so we will come to generalization. And much of this work has involved important ideas from theoretical physics in two dimensions, a major breakthrough came with V10, who gave a simple interpretation of the Jones polynomial in terms of 3D physics. And then, at the end, uh, it's written that a full mathematical treatment has yet to be uh, appear. So, then uh, we continue with this. Uh, so, I come back to uh, the other polynomial invariant. So, many people, including people here uh, came with the on-fly PT polynomial. So first uh, six people, and uh, Joseph uh, with Trachik uh, also got this. But I want to quote that uh, 
Vaughan was not the founder of this polynomial, probably he could, but indeed uh, he has uh, an independent construction uh, from uh, Markov traces on Eker algebra, uh, and this was published in his paper, a very interesting paper, Eker algebra representation of braid groups and link polynomial. And here is his proposition. So to, you will recognize downstairs here uh, uh, T minus one PL plus minus T PL minus, which is the same as the previous Jones relation, but a second variable X uh, giving a generalization of this, of this polynomial. Question so far? So then uh, Vaughan uh, worked on uh, static, statistical models. And this work was parallel with uh, Tourayev work uh, on Jan Baxter equations and quantum groups. But here, I want to quote this uh, example in Vaughan paper, where you say that we give another example corresponding to the n-dimensional irreducible representation of SL2. So it was realized that from quantum group, uh, you get analogs uh, of Jones polynomial using representation theory of quantum groups. So you can either uh, vary the quantum group and use the vector representation, or you can keep SL2 and take other representation. This is, this is called as color joints, and it was as an example in this paper. And of course, at the same time that it was published previously, uh, Turayev, uh, Vladimir Turayev had a great paper where he was constructing uh, also invariant of links. And the main example in uh, Turayev recovers uh, only on flight poly, on flight PT polynomial and Kaufman two variable polynomial uh, from quantum groups. Uh, but he, he mostly has examples which are the vector representation of the classical cells. So then, uh, of course, you have all these quantum group constructions. And uh, uh, the two uh, famous papers are by Reshetikin uh, to Rayev. So this is extended to ribbon graph and many examples from quantum group. And then uh, you had this famous construction of the 3D invariant announced by Witten. This is what this invariant are now called Witten Reshetikin to Rayev invariant for the 3D invariants. And you have uh, this famous, this very nice book of uh, Vladimir, uh, where he constructed uh, all this invariant and particularly uh, the structure which is uh, relevant to this construction of TQFTs, which is uh, the structure of a modular category. And at uh, the same time, uh, people uh, came with construction from skein theory and I want to quote a uh, licorice contribution uh, before our contribution. So we, we did uh, uh, use the, uh, his contribution. And then uh, we had, uh, that was the beginning of my, uh, of my uh, uh, career. Uh, we had this uh, co construction uh, of three manifold invariant and TQFT uh, in the scope, not of quantum group, but of this uh, scheme theory. And uh, this was, uh, uh, quite uh, highly used. I think with Ellen we will have this, some kind of skin theory, uh, which is... Uh, but in, I, I want to... Uh, the, this construction is for, from Kaufman bracket, but in this paper, uh, the skin uh, module and algebra are called jones kaufman uh, scan modules. Uh, then it became Kaufman modules, but uh, you see that the relation, uh, Jones relation and Kaufman relation are very close. Okay. So then I came, I'm coming to the second part of my talk. Uh, then, but in here, uh, I want to quote uh, also a, a one contribution which is probably uh, less known, but is still inspiring now for me at least. So I. I want to mention that uh, in this Eker algebra paper, uh, he was considering 
uh, mapping class groups. So rem remember that this was before the TQFT construction. So he said the problem of, I, I think he, he had probably had discussion uh, with John Bierman on this, I, I would guess. But uh, the problem of classification of closed three manifold can be reduced the IGAR decomposition to the study of the mapping class groups, which means diffeomorphism group modulo the connected component of the identity. So mapping classes, diffeomorphism of the surface up to isotopy. And uh, it would be significant if one could find representation of these groups and an invariant via the Redmaster Singer theorem. So he was thinking of a construction similar to Markov trace in order to get invariant of a closed three manifold. And uh, uh, we have not yet succeeded, but uh, I think it was a great idea. And uh, indeed, uh, he gave uh, some interesting representation uh, of one, what we call the hyper elliptic mapping class group, and second, the whole mapping class group in genus two. And it was like this. Uh, so the genus G surface is a double covering of the sphere, branch of uh, 2G plus two points. I will give a picture just after. And you have this birman hilden homomorphism, which comes from the mapping class group of S2 with 2G plus two punctures uh, to uh, the mapping class group of a genus G surface. And the, the image of this uh, homomorphism is my, will be my definition of the hyper elliptic mapping class group. And uh, I give, it happens that in genus two, the hyper elliptic mapping class group is equal uh, to the whole mapping class group. So it's a simpler case. This is not the case in higher genus. So here is my uh, genus two surface. And uh, uh, the, you get uh, this uh, double branch cover by uh, rotating by pi. And I represented down uh, the orbit space, uh, which is indeed a sphere, with uh, here uh, six punctures. Uh, you could also think, uh, I do not have the picture, that the, uh, the, the surface could have a hole. It could be with one boundary component, and then you will get a disk, but this time uh, with uh, five points. Okay, so then, uh, I will talk about John's representation of this genus two mapping class group. So he obtained representation of the genus G hyper mapping class group uh, for certain representation of the echo algebra uh, H 2G plus two. So remember that the echo algebra is the quotient of the braid group algebra by a quadratic, by quadratic relations. So you think that it's a deformation of the group algebra of the symmetric group. And the semi-simple decomposition is the same, meaning that irreducible representation are indexed by Ewing diagrams. So then, uh, we have this irreducible, and uh, you have uh, von Jones criterion, which says that the representation of H uh, 2G plus two indexed by a certain Young diagram can be renormalized into a representation which extends to the hyper elliptic mapping class group if and only if Y is rectangular. So he is using representation theory to be able to extend the representation of the classical braid group with 2G plus two uh, points uh, to the hyper elliptic mapping class group. And he asks the question, uh, can we extend further? And uh, then, so this is uh, his writing for this uh, theorem. Uh, because of the notation, uh, I wrote it my way. <laughs> but uh, that was the, the, you can find in the paper. And then, uh, in genus two, uh, he exhibited the matrices because up to symmetry, you have only uh, one uh, young tableau, of si a rectangular young tableau of size six. Okay. So I want to emphasize uh, this uh, contribution of Vaughan's and now come to my uh, stuff, to my recent stuff. So remember that we have, so I, I will not talk about TQFT, I will just concentrate on uh, mapping class group representation. 
And then uh, we are, we, everybody probably uh, knows that uh, there are the, the TQFT construction I talk about uh, with uh, Turayev and uh, uh, construction uh, contains representation of central extension of the mapping class groups. I, I will not uh, talk on this. Uh, Helen will talk on the skind algebra of surfaces, and here you also have an action of the mapping class group. And this is nice. So what we are doing, so this is uh, recent stuff, is that using classical topology, uh, we construct action of certain mapping class groups on uh, homologies of not uh, disk uh, configuration, but surface configuration, an ordered configuration uh, with local coefficients, uh, which are built from representation of the Heisenberg group. If you do not know too much about uh, local coefficient, I will explain a bit, but think that you take uh, the configuration space and you build a nice regular curver and you like to study uh, the homology of this regular curver. Questions so far? So this is a paper with uh, uh, Martin Palmer, which who is here, no? <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, Avai Shukat uh, from Pakistan. And uh, you can find it on my page on the web. By the way, for people online, uh, my uh, handout is available on my web page. So I start uh, this story with uh, Ruth Lawrence's work in the 90s, uh, which, who constructed a family a representation of uh, the braid group acting on homology of a certain uh, regular cover of uh, the disk configuration, of configuration in the punctured disk. So here, this CN tilde is a Z2 cover of the unordered configuration space of N point in the M punctured disk. And you, we, everybody know about this famous theorem proving that braid groups are linear. This was proved independently by Biglow and Dan, Stephen Biglow and Dan Kramer in 2001 and 2. And uh, in fact, uh, this is classical construction but this is indeed quantum, and Kono proved that uh, this uh, Lorentz or LKB representation are equivalent to SL2 quantum representation on highest weight space. So it's connected with quantum. So now, uh, we, I quote that uh, the mapping class group, sorry, the braid group is the mapping class group, is uh, the mapping class group of the punctured disk. So then our goal is to think about Lorentz uh, or LKB representation, type representation for surface uh, mapping class group. And my preferred surface has one boundary component for some reason. I, uh, I do not pretend that we cannot extend, but I will uh, talk on this. So then uh, we hope, so I will first uh, give a summary of result and then come back in, de uh, in the details. So we got a local system on the configuration from a representation of the Heisenberg group HG. I will define it if you don't know, which will appear as a quotient of the surface braid group. So the surface braid group is pi one of this unordered configuration of sur on the surface. And so we obtain a twisted action of the mapping class group on uh, this homology with, of configuration with local coefficient. So you are, you are not surprised that the mapping class group is acting on the configuration. The point is uh, to lift to the cover this action. And uh, in fact, uh, the Heisenberg group has the famous Schrodinger representation, 
because it is the discrete uh, uh, Heisenberg group, uh, it, it has the usual Schrodinger representation on Hilbert space, but it also has a finite dimensional representation uh, when the central charge is acting by a root of unity. And so we get uh, up, uh, so I put a PU <laughs> because it's uh, defined up to coefficient. So we get a projective, unita projective unitary representation uh, of uh, the mapping class group. And in the case uh, of a finite dimension, uh, sorry, the dimension, this is the dimension not for this version of the homology. Uh, here, I'm a little bit cheating, uh, I will be precise. So for, for some other version of the homology, not this one, uh, we are able to, to compute the dimension. And uh, for the, I will introduce uh, a certain uh, representation which I call the linearization of the left regular representation of the Heisenberg group. And in this case, we obtain uh, linear representation, finite dimensional linear representation of the nat native mapping class group. So it was very quick, but I will come to detail now. So this is kind of announcement. Okay, so here is my uh, favorite surface. And uh, then I'm working uh, with the surface braid group, pi one of our favorite configuration space. And the point is what, that uh, we have a presentation for this group, which is not as simple as the usual braid group, but it's not so bad. It's a little bit reformulated from the, use, for the presentation given uh, in the paper, but uh, uh, here you see that uh, you have sigma 1, sigma n minus 1. I will give a picture afterwards, which are the classical uh, braid generators. Just change two strands, two points. And uh, you have what I called uh, pi 1 generators where the uh, alpha 1, alpha g, beta 1, beta g, in fact, alpha 1, alpha g, beta 1, beta g are standard generators for pi 1 of the surface. And if you apply to the first strand of the braid, this gives a braid. And uh, I just focus on the last uh, relation, uh, which is uh, labeled SCR. Why this relation? Because this relation is not homogeneous. Okay? And this SCR is for special commuting relation. You see that? Uh, so I will give the picture. Uh, sorry. Uh, I want to quote that the first presentation of braid group in close case uh, was by Peter Scott uh, in the 70s. And then uh, some people, uh, Gonzalez Meneses and Bellingeri, revisited this presentation, and Bellingeri was the first to give in Bundari case. So, okay, here are my, uh, my picture. Here is my picture for the special commuting relation. This probably needs some explanation. You learn in elementary uh, course of topology uh, presentation of surfaces as a quotient of the disk by identification on the boundary. So here my surface is the horizontal uh, half plane. The boundary is behind. And the arrows give you uh, the identification. And my loop in the configuration uh, is represented by its, its graph. And the graph uh, is drawn in surface times interval. So you see uh, here, so you start with two points, uh, which is my base configuration, and first you apply the classical uh, generator. So I'm composing from bottom uh, to top, and I write up there from right to left. So I get then alpha 1. So in alpha 1, the first uh, 
uh, strand goes across uh, the first handle. So this is just uh, the generator of pi 1, and the second point will not move. Then again sigma 1, classical. Now beta 1, and again sigma 1. And you can see that in the bottom uh, picture, you can push the strand and make the, isot the isotopy, which will give the up picture. So then I obtain this uh, SCR relation up. This is, I um, insist, because this is very important now, think that do uh, the usual stuff in the classical case, which is try to abelianize the group. If you abelianize the group, then sigma 1 square will come 1. And this is not very good, because you, you are losing uh, the configuration, almost. So what is natural now is to say, let's uh, do not do, we do not abelianize, but just make sigma 1 central. You see, if you make sigma 1 central, uh, this comes uh, beta 1, uh, sorry, beta 1 alpha 1, no. alpha 1 beta 1 equals sigma 1 square beta 1 alpha 1, this, which is Heisenberg relation. So this is the Heisenberg group. Uh, now I, I will define carefully the Heisenberg group. is the central extension of H1 of sigma G1, uh, which is uh, defined with the intersection co-cycle. And uh, concretely, you take Z uh, times H with this operation uh, where you add uh, the homology component, but you correct with intersection uh, the central part. So this is definition of uh, the discrete Heisenberg group HG. And so from the above presentation, uh, you can check easily that uh, the surface braid group quotiented by sigma 1 central is isomorphic to the Heisenberg group HG. So we win, we just, we are winning uh, Heisenberg cover of the configuration space. If you have an homomorphism on a group, you have an associated regular cover. So now we consider the associated regular cover in space and its homology, and this homology, because I, I'm writing uh, braids from the right, support a right action of the Heisenberg group. So this uh, will give uh, the structure of a module of a, uh, the group of Heisenberg, the, so, sorry, the algebra of Heisenberg group, uh, so, and I will compute the homology. So now uh, I change the model for my surface, because now I will compute something. So the surface uh, here is genus J with one boundary component, but the boundary component is decomposed into a blue part, boundary minus, and the red part within boundary plus. So I consider this surface as a cobordism with boundary. And then, uh, I take configuration. In the boundary of the configuration, you have a subspace which contains one point in the minus boundary. And what I'm able to compute is the homology relative to this part of the boundary. And also, I'm using a fancy thing which uh, uh, here I call borel moore but somebody say locally finite locally finite homology, and uh, it's not a big gadget. This just means that you also will work with uh, uh, cycles which are relative to the, to the infinite, to the, the boundary at infinity. So think about uh, the symmetric space. So in the symmetric space, you have the diagonal. So the symmetric space is just product of sigma uh, quotiented by the action of symmetric group. And here you have the regular part, which are configuration, and uh, you have the singular part, which is the big diagonal. And so we are working in some sense, but with, with local coefficient, it's a little bit uh, delicate. We are working relative to part of the boundary and uh, the, the diagonal. 
Uh, probably people like to think uh, in terms of uh, Hilbert's scheme, if you are very good in uh, algebraic geometry, but I'm, in, I'm topologist. Okay, so I have uh, this version of homology. And then for this version, uh, we are able to compute uh, so HN Borel Moore. Uh, when I will speak, I will just summarize, summarize CN tilde CN minus tilde, so it's a relative version of a Z, but with a structure of a Z bracket HG, it's free of rank 2G plus N minus 1 N. And the idea is that I will have enough if I put configuration not anywhere on the surface, but on the gamma I curves. And so, My dimension corresponds to count partition of n in 2G parts. So we, we have a basis which is represented by configuration on the gamma curve. And then uh, we, so for the story uh, of uh, homology of covers, uh, this, this, was, this is okay, but now uh, we go to uh, local coefficients. So, sorry. Uh, it's usual uh, to embed uh, the Heisenberg group in uh, G plus two uh, matrices like this. So, you, uh, the homology uh, has bases corresponding to the alpha i, beta i generator of pi 1. And this determines two Lagrangian subspace. And I use the decomposition of a class X in homology as P plus Q, component in AI, component in BI. And then uh, you can check that here you get an homomorphism which embed uh, the Heisenberg group as group of matrices. So this, of course, gives you a, a finite dimensional representation. It's not unitary. Uh, it's not simple. Uh, I like another one, which is less used, but it's better in some sense. We will see later. We'll say, oh, uh, the Heisenberg group uh, is something like Z 2G plus 1. And this is a fine space with the natural affine structure of the of power of z. Then I have a left regular action here. And this F uh, regular action is a fine automorphism. Then an affine automorphism like to be linearized. So I get uh, 2G plus 1, uh, sorry, 2G plus 2, I add one dimension in linearization, uh, uh, representation of the Heisenberg group. And I like this one. We'll see later. But you have also uh, the Schrodinger representation. So I just gave the formula uh, for fun. Uh, you don't need to remember. Uh, this is well known. And uh, for those who know, uh, this is, uh, it's, it's a, in fact, this can be constructed as a representation of the real Heisenberg group. And it can be constructed by induction procedure. So you, you take a character on the center, you extend to the maximal uh, abelian subgroup, and then you induce. Uh, it's a fancy construction, but it's not a big deal. So you have Schrodinger, the advantage that it is unitary. And because we are using the discrete uh, Heisenberg group, we also have a finite uh, Schrodinger representation. Dimension n, where n is the order of uh, the central charge, the center, the character in the center. So then, we start with action. Uh, sorry. The, the mapping class group, uh, we, we want to lift something to the curve. So we, we have to be careful with local coefficients because maybe uh, the mapping class will act on coefficients. So for a mapping class, Uh, so I, I put bracket for the class and F for the actual diffeomorphism. Uh, we have a diffeomorphism on configuration. And it induces an automorphism 
it should be HG, uh, of the Heisenberg group. This you can check. This is just because uh, the kernel of the quotient back to the Heisenberg group uh, is not a characteristic subgroup, but uh, the, the diffeomorphism will fix uh, sigma 1, and we just make sigma 1 central. So the kernel is fixed. And then for a representation of the Heisenberg group, uh, we have a two twisted representation, which is first automorphism and then representation. So the, the mapping task group is acting on representation and twists the representation, and I will denote this by veto for the twisted representation. And then uh, I start with the local system. So the singular or cellular chain complex, as you like, of the Heisenberg group carver, denoted by S star of CN tilde, uh, is a right Z bracket HG module. This is action by, on the right by deck transformation. You extend the deck transformation action. And given a representation, uh, the local homology corresponding to this representation is that of the complex, which is take uh, the, the complex of the cover and transfer product with the representation and take the homology of this. This is my favorite uh, definition of uh, the homology uh, with coefficient in a, in a local system. And then uh, we show that for a mapping class, uh, the map Cn of, left, of f lifts to the Heisenberg cover, and this inducing a chain map, which is z linear, but twisted over z bracket h. And twisting means that if you act on something with an element of the Heisenberg group, then in the image, uh, you will introduce the automorphism of Heisenberg. So this is a formula for a twisted uh, map. So then this means that we have uh, chain maps uh, at, the single, at the chain level where uh, you should be careful that the source representation is twisted compared to the target representation. And uh, you can play this, in fact, uh, uh, you say, we, you have a functor on the groupoid uh, of automorphism of, uh, if you want to be fancy, of uh, the Heisenberg group. And then uh, I come back with uh, the Borel-Moore homology I already defined. And I get uh, this relative, this, uh, sub, sorry, subspace of the boundary. Uh, and I quote, because I'm working with Borel-Moore homology, that it is properly embedded. So the inclusion is a proper map. This means that uh, we get uh, this twisted representation theorem. So let n bigger than 2, uh, g bigger than 1, v a representation of the discrete Heisenberg group. Uh, then uh, this uh, Borel-Moore relative module with relative homology with coefficient in V is isomorphic to the direct sum of copies of V, finite, finite number of copies of V. This is uh, just application of the previous result. We, we, we are the basis of a Z bracket H, so we get a number of copies. And moreover, there is a natural twisted representation of the mapping class group uh, on these modules. And by this, we mean that uh, the map CNF star uh, also vary, twist uh, the representation in the source. Same twisting as in the chain map. So we have uh, this uh, twisted representation. The question is, can we untwist? And let's uh, uh, start with uh, Schrodinger representation. So here we have uh, so this uh, 
Schrodinger representation parameterized by the Planck constant. So you fix the parameter on the center. This is h bar. You have the formula. And you have uh, this Stone von Neumann theorem, which says that this uh, W is an irreducible unitary representation of uh, the real Heisenberg group. And up to isomorphism is unique uh, for this, uh, for a fixed character, for this character. So this is very good, because this means that when you twist uh, the Schrödinger representation by an automorphism of Heisenberg, you get something isomorphic. So what, the thing that was twisted before can be untwisted by using this isomorphism of coefficient. Uh, I just go very quick for the finite dimensional one because this is the same story. And uh, now for tau, an automorphism, so this Stone von Neumann theorem provides a unitary uh, isomorphism between the twisted and the original one because you keep the same central character and you use this Stone von Neumann theorem. So then, uh, of course, uh, this untwisting procedure has a certain ambiguity, which is a scalar. So we will not get a representation of the native mapping class group, but uh, up to a projective uh, factor. So this means that we have projective action, which are homomorphism from M of sigma to the projective uh, unitary group. This is not a big deal. Uh, if you know about this, uh, you know that a projective representation can be solved by a central extension. So you get, and we computed the extension, na uh, uh, native ex uh, representation of a central extension. And because the mapping class group are embedded, because we, I have boundary, uh, the, the appropriate extension is the one we call universal central extension. If, if the genus is bigger than four, there is a, a, a universal central extension and uh, this is the good one. Okay, so we add uh, twisted action. Uh, if we take specific representation uh, up to central extension, uh, we get a native action. And among those, uh, we have uh, action on Hilbert spaces, and we have action also on finite dimensional unitary spaces. And uh, now, uh, about uh, the regular. So I, I think I have time to give the formulas. So I take uh, the left regular action of an element in Heisenberg group. I denote with a dot because I will act on Kx afterwards. And uh, it's an affine automorphism of Hg uh, identified with Z 2G plus 2. And we decompose uh, the homology part uh, according to the Lagrangian, as before. P0 is the component in the AI. Q0 is the component in the QI. In the BI, sorry. And then, uh, for this regular action, uh, we just have these formulas, meaning that Kx equal PQ goes to K prime, P prime, Q prime. And from an uh, elementary uh, math, math class, uh, you see that uh, this is a fine map. And so you write uh, the linearization. This means you, you add just one coordinate, and you get a linear representation of this. Uh, the advantage is that here, the twisted representation is canonically isomorphic to the original one. Uh, here, for tau, an automorphism of Hg, if you take the linear map tau times identity, you get an isomorphism of Z bracket Hg module. The twisted representation is canonically isomorphic to the, ori to the original. To the and then, uh, this means that using this representation, we have a native representation from the mapping class group to the automorphism. I forgot Borel-Moore. 
It's also true for this, but I forgot to put Borel Moore. But it's also true for this one, except it's like I do not know how to compute. Uh, and it associates to F the composition of the coefficient isomorphism. See that you go from L to L twisted by FH. So it's just the coefficient isomorphism, and then uh, the functorial homology isomorphism. Okay? So this, uh, maybe I, I will uh, stop uh, here and start discussion if you like. Uh, question for going further is this classical uh, quantum? Uh, my exposition was completely classical, except it that Heisenberg is reminiscent to quantum. But remember this Kono result that Lorentz uh, representation uh, is equivalent to uh, QSL2 action on weight spaces. And so it's true. We can act on these homologies with quantum SL2 also. So it's both classical and quantum, and this I like a lot. Then uh, here we have action. Of course, remember that in the quantum topology picture, we like to have not only representation of mapping class group, but uh, also action of cobordism. So do we get here, do we extend to action of cobordism? Uh, maybe even, I would say, do we have following uh, Vaughan a suggestion, which is, I feel is almost here to suggest him that we could do something with his ideas. Uh, do we have here, uh, for getting a three manifold invariant, uh, a Markov type uh, trace? And uh, uh, of course, uh, we think about uh, this uh, faithfulness result for the classical braid group. So here, uh, we can raise the question, even with configuration of two points, uh, could it be faithful? For the moment, nothing in the kernel. Uh, some arguments in a, a big law uh, proof uh, are working, but it's not done. But pe people, some people are thinking about this. Uh, I mean, for people more in the geometry of groups, <laughs> I guess it will be interesting to know uh, if there are, in the unitary case, almost invariant vectors. Uh, you know what I mean, <laughs> probably, for those. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, what about uh, closed surfaces? Remember that Vaughan criterion uh, was a way to extend from the, from the situation with Boundary to the situation without Boundary. I mean, the, the uh, Jones criterion with these uh, uh, Jung diagrams. And uh, so uh, it's a question. Uh, I would say that Vaughan here would say, hmm, uh, if you want to compare with my stuff, uh, uh, do you have something like a uh, quotient? And I think this is, it could be a good suggestion, so I like to think about this. But this is something I thought while uh, preparing this talk uh, in his honor, and uh, I'm uh, really pleased to finish with this. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Uh, there's no? Okay, so let me just ask the... Uh, oh. Ah. Can we see? Uh, uh, we cannot hear. Ah, uh, he's on mute. You, ha you have to unmute. It's muted. No? Ah, no? Can you? Maybe you could write on the... So, any questions online? Oh, yeah, there's a question here uh, from Jirong Guang. Is this representation related to the Vanya representation for finite abelian groups in genus one. Uh, I do not see this, but what I can see 
in the case of uh, the Eisenberg, finite dimensional Eisenberg, uh, it's definitively connected uh, with uh, the SL2 uh, TQFT representation. So I told you that uh, uh, you have a geometric or topological uh, action of quantum SL2 on the, if you sum of uh, all uh, n, so this uh, action will shift the n by one for the f action and by minus one for the e action. So if you take uh, the case of uh, finite order central charge, so the finite dimensional uh, Schrodinger representation, then you can extract a finite dimensional uh, representation of QSL2, and this will recover uh, the, the thing we have uh, in TQFT. So, not finite group, but uh, some construction based on modular categories, yeah. It's not, uh, some people are working on this. <laughs> it, it will come soon, <laughs> probably. But with finite group, I don't know. Okay, any uh, other questions or comments? So you expect that this would be a faithful representation? You have any candidate for element in the kernel or anything like uh, that? No candidate for element in the kernel. Uh, I mean, uh, you see, I, I was very busy. <laughs> so, <laughs> at some point, I worked on this. Uh, <laughs> So um, you, you can make conjectures, and, uh, either they are true or not, but uh, I would bet. <laughs> Sometimes you bet and you lose. <laughs> so I would bet it is faithful. But. Well, so if there's no more questions, let's thank Christian again for a very interesting talk. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>